for at some point in time, but Steve Condent yeah, is a guy him. I follow on Instagram, Yorga. He's got ants in his pants while he comes <laughs> Well, he can down with me. I'm sorry. Well, sorry, no, that was my wife. She was playing with the dog, and this, the dog came flying in and hit the water bowl. Okay, everything's uh, a disaster, but we were saying hey, about Steve. Steve Condon. Condon. He's got those. He's got his pants Condon. while he rides his bicycle with bicycle shoes. And then how do you even get bicycle shoes? Because they don't oh. make those things. Follow on County, Orga. What? Jim, I'm gonna Jim, I'm gonna play the intro whenever you say to do it. Go ahead, Craig. Well, thank you, sir. Asking you to watch Craig the Hunter show. It's an outstanding show. Like, share, subscribe. It's wonderful. I'm jealous of that guy's that guy's kitty. Gorgeous. I know. Look at that smile. Yeah. Go. Let's go. Go. Handsome. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Craig Donner Show. As always, I am joined by my co-hosts, Mr. Jim Boswell. Oh, I love, I love the glove. Why has he got the? It's like he's dealing. It's like he's dealing with a, bo a dead body or something. Why you got the gloves on, dude? If, if it don't fit, you have to quit me. Oh, I get yeah, it. I if it doesn't fit, you have to quit me. That is the big story. Oh, and we're also joined by our other core host, uh, Account Yorga, who could be four hundred and thirty-six years old. Thirty-seven and a half. Thirty-seven and a half. Now, Jim, I, look, yeah. we don't usually start off with a news story, but I want you to start off with that news story because it is very important to what's going on that day. And, or, and we all well, we all remember the day that we watched the, the Jim, torture. what was it? It was a Bronco, a Bronco, yeah. a Bronco, Bronco, yep. a Bronco, Bronco. Hold on. Let me yep. get the uh, share screen up. Yeah, I got the story up. I got your vote. In case nobody knows what happened, there it is. Okay, CNN Stephanie Alam praises O.J. Simpson. So many people were happy to see Simpson get away with murder because he was rich, famous, and black. If you ask me, that's kind of that's pretty pathetic. This is CNN. The goals at CNN were praising double murder where O.J. Simpson afterwards reported he died after a battle with cancer. O.J. Simpson on Thursday died just a couple months after it was reported he, is, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. In February, O.J. Simpson denied he was having receiving hospice care and the video posted to X. Hospice, hospice, haha, ha, O.J. said in the video. I'm not in any hospice, but I, know, I don't know who put that out there. I'm hosting a ton of friends for the Super Bowl. Really, Jim? Jim? I didn't really know him for that or for his NFL career. I just knew him for doing those uh, cameos in the in the Naked Gun movies. That's the only way. But I do you know what they said? I, I don't mean to break up, uh, Mr. Boswell, real quick. But I heard on the news today, and this was ABC News. I, no, it's Fox News. Actually, they said NFL star O.J. Simpson has died. That's how they gave him the moniker, the NFL star, not the murderer, not the you know, the anything else. Yeah, you know. exactly. That's, that's what he's doing. 
Well, but he's not known for that. That's only fucked out my radio, man, you know? He's more known for the murder case and all that rigmarole than he ever was for the NFL stuff. That's all he did. NFL star, which he was, which he was. He was great in the NFL. His head was this flipping big. How are you going to take a guy down like that, man? Yeah. He was a running back for the Buffalo Bills. I remember that when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, that's not the the one. If you had one moniker out of this life of murder and, you know, yep. NFL and, you know, sports and everything else. Um, well, and he got locked up after that for, like, robbing somebody or some shit. You know? yeah, they, 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 they come on and they go, NFL star O.J. Simpson. I'm like. Wait a minute, man! You can't just leave it like that, man. There's Wait, like this, there's like three Jeremy, monikers. This just, in, this just in. Jeremy the Jester writes. Then he wrote on his Instagram right before he died. I did that shit. <laughs> Sorry, that's hard. But he probably could have. You know, well, like, everybody knows he did that shit, man. Everybody knows he did that shit. Yeah. Fast yeah. forward two months, and OJ is now dead. Simpson was accused of brutally murdering his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Rod Goldman in June 1994. Despite overwhelming evidence pointing to O.J. Simpson being the murderer, the disgraced football player was found not guilty. And all of us remember that this 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 was because of the Rodney King thing. CNN's Stephanie yeah. Alon said the choir part out loud as she was reporting on O.J. Simpson's death. She praised O.J. Simpson for getting away with murder. So many people were happy to see that someone who is rich and famous and black get away with it cuts it off with murder damn it jimmy can't stop on that word it seems racist I'm not a jim. damn you jim the word jim. Is the words missing in the story what other people did in the system as well too stephanie alam said oj simpson's children had to grow up with a mother at, it says with a mother and cnn is praising the murderer they, they worded this wrong they grew up without a mother these yeah, no, the mother was dead. She had her head chopped off. Well, well, well the, the CNN reporter is saying that they grew up with a mother. It, it, it is CNN. One reason why I wanted to bring this story to people's attention is CNN has just gotten to be the, the, their level of garbage has stooped to an all time low. Full of lies, Jim. They're full of lies. You can't believe in anything. Actually, they do, they do have some stories that are truthful about what's going on in the Middle East. Another thing I don't like about CNN is I I just noticed, like, I can only stomach a few minutes of it. They have they have people on their show that are basically... Then he goes and throws up. They're basically praising Hamas when it comes to what's going on over there. Yeah, it's they good. are. It's, I hate that channel. You're right about it's that, buddy. Good, it's good to watch it to see what the other side's saying. Oh, hey, Jerry, by the way, I, I want to bring you. up... You're not yeah. supposed to bring up another show when you're on your show, but y'all got to go check out Roseanne Barr episode from today with Jim Brewer, the comedian. Um, I was crying. I was crying hysterically, laughing. It was such a good podcast. And if you don't know, Roseanne's awake, like most of us. Yeah. Jim Brewer is awake, like most of us. So go check out that show. It was really good. So. I've said it before, it'll never happen. If Trump gets back in office, put Roseanne Barr in there as the press secretary. She will eat up and spit out all the fake news reporters asking her questions. You're right. Yeah, but she might say some dumb shit too. You gotta be you gotta really tiptoe around on that shit, man. I, I wouldn't trust her in that position. No. But be right. what was her name? What was the one that, that Trump had on the McKenna McKinney? Yeah, um, McAnany, Mac Katie Mac McAnany. Now her, yes, her, Very yes. Kaylee Mac McAnany. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Kaylee Mac McAnany. It's Irish. The name. McAnany. All right, Jim. I want to try something new. Damn it! Wait, hold on, Jim. I'm having technical difficulties. Give me one second. Give me a second, Jim. At least the damn camera, Jim. What about the cameras working this week? Huh? I got a new camera. And I Thank goodness. Well, well, no, and mine. Your head is not as shiny. Did you did, do something with the lights, too? He was moving like this, Yorker, with his other camera. It looked like he was a robot. <laughs> it looked like he was, the robot floating. Face. Like he was 
floating in space. I was like, Jim, what's going on with you? Are you my camera says more of my family room, and I tried to make it a little narrow. We don't want everybody to see everything we have in here. Well, Jim, I want to see it all. All right, Jim, well, let me I play do like this. That. I do like that one light bulb you had. I'm telling you, I'm really jealous. I love his light switch as well. Jim, this is a new one of my new short segments I want to share with you, Jim. You ready? Yeah. Say, say let's, let's roll with this. Uh, action. That's even better. <laughs> I like it. Well, thank you, Jim. Nobody, nobody asked you, Jim. You will speak when you are spoken to. But I, <laughs> just, but I like it too. <laughs> That's the, the music, the music's kind of gay. No, it's not as gay as my music. All right, it wasn't that bad. It was okay, but up, oh, it was about to play it again. That's how good it was. Wait, I gotta stop it, or I'm hearing it in my ear. Okay, Jim. Yeah. Oh, wait, you hear that? Yeah. That was a low flying mosquito plane. They fly what? and spray what supposedly is a mosquito killer <laughs> on us. <laughs> Same I don't know because of what's going on here with the skies. Because I noticed Stephanie um, is in chat. The same thing oh. happens here. Late in the afternoon, there's high flying planes. Then the sky gets cloudy. She's right. But that's a low flying mosquito plane, Jim. But Jim, tonight I just want to highlight just the headlines and screw the story because we live in a society where we just read the headlines. We don't even read the story and going through this exercise has made me realize that I really crave the story. I'm not from that generation. <laughs> this segment, uh, this segment just brings you the juicy headlines and we don't read the story, which is how it works now. Uh, Coast Guard intercepts 101 U.S. bound migrants in, a, in boats on the high seas, then sends them back. That's all you yeah, get. No gas. Uh, well, that's all you get. We don't even know where they're from. I didn't read where they were from, Yorga. I didn't even bother looking into it. All I had to know that, that there was almost like Dalmatians, there was 101 migrants. And Disney's going to be making a movie about it, of course. <laughs> Take your rudder and turn it 180 degrees, baby. And go the other way. <laughs> but we sent them back. We sent the puppies back. All right. Next headline for you folks is Planet Fitness has been pretty much destroyed, says company founder amid speculation on boycott cancellations. And that's, dude, Jim, I don't know if you knew about that, but they had a guy was shaving in the Planet Fitness bathroom and they backed him up. They, they, they defended him and they actually kicked the lady out who reported him. There was an episode, I think, at one Planet Fitness where a man there was in the woman's dressing room. He changed fully naked. These women were changing in their, to their swimsuits to go swimming. Yeah, they defend that shit. It's pathetic. That's it. Now, Jim, here's the next headline for you. A man named Brick is being caned in Sing Singapore for illegally sneaking into the country on a small boat. Local report. That's all I read, Jim. I didn't even read the story. Who would have a sneak in Singapore? But the man's name is Brick, and he's being caned because that's how they deal with people. My son is very human climate. Ooh. Jim, this is a good one. This is just a headline, folks. It's all we're reading. We're not even reading you the damn story. New <laughs> Boeing whistleblower says plane maker cut corners on its Dreamliner jets. And he says, I am doing this not because I want Boeing to fail, but because I want to prevent crashes. And that's it. That's all you get. So you're going to have to really go look for the story if you want the story. But that says enough. There's another whistleblower. Oh, wait, Jim, here's another story. New Boeing whistleblower found unalive of natural causes. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Jim. That's not a real headline. Uh, oh, here's the last one, Jim. This is the last one for you. 
Oklahoma judge orders Kansas City Chiefs Chiefs superfan Chiefaholic to pay $10.8 million to a bank teller. What? Yeah. Why? Why? What did he do? Well, let me tell you, I had to read ahead on this one, and I did. Uh, Oklahoma judge has ordered a Kansas City Chiefs superfan known as Chiefsaholic who admitted to robbing multiple banks to pay $10.8 million to a bank teller he threatened with a gun. I had to read that Damn. one, Jim, because it was that intrigued me. Out of all those stories, that's the one I had to know about. So, and this concludes your just the headlines. Ooh, but nothing just streamlined it a little bit. Oh yeah, but wait, wait. But also, Do you know who gonna... used to be a bank teller here in uh, Richmond, Virginia? Who? Pat Benatar. Turn me loose. Wait, no, no, that's the. Uh, I'm sorry, that's yeah, lover. Yeah, that ain't her, but it's. <laughs> I was lover. <laughs> <laughs> we are young. Yeah, that song. That's funny. That song never goes anywhere. It never gets to a point of. It does anyway. You, you know, know what you want to always hear though, Yorga is. Um, Oh, what was the Thank one I just heard? She, yeah. be, she okay. made a statement being a female rocker. We yeah, belong to the night. That one. We belong to the night. Yeah, she did that. Yeah, she was a bank. She was a bank teller here in Richmond. Oh, dude, I would have loved to have gotten my cash from Pat Benatar. I know, just two dollars. That would have been good. Damn it, the dogs acting up. Sorry, y'all. The dogs in the kennel. We're trying to puppy train. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, stage why, is, why would this man on Second Amendment with role based on any gun bill Lisa Markowski voted for? Okay, here we go again. Firearm dealers will be required by the Biden administration to run background checks on buyers who purchase firearms from gun shows or other places that are not actual stores. The rule, the rule also applies to online sales and even between private persons. So if you're selling a gun to a friend, you're going to have to run a background check. The Biden administration says it has the authority to expand this curtailment of constitutional rights because of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which was supported and voted for by Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski. Senator Dan Sullivan voted against it. Everybody knows Lisa Murkowski is nothing but a rhino. That's not part of the story, but that's my opinion. Well, no, I, I agree with you. I like that part. In response to the announcement, Senate Republicans will introduce a bill to repeal the Biden rule that was announced by the Department of Justice on Wednesday, which vastly expands required federal background checks. Republican Senators John Cornyn of Texas and Tom Tillis of North Carolina will introduce legislation to repeal the rule. The Biden rule says that even a single firearm transaction may be sufficient to require a license. If there, is, uh, if there is other behavior to support commercial activity, for example, a person selling just one gun and then saying to others they are willing and able to purchase more firearms for resale may be required to obtain a license and run background checks, according to the White House. This is going to keep guns in the hands of domestic abusers and felons. President Joe Biden said in a statement, Mm -hmm. Our administration is going to continue to do everything we possibly can to save lives. Congress needs to finish the job and pass universal background checks legislation now. Executors of estates or personal, let's scroll down, or personal representatives of, of <laughs> estates. I got to scroll down. <laughs> Bro, I the world. Now, didn't his son get in trouble for the same stuff? His son, his son got in trouble. His son lied about the background check, then threw the gun, I think, in a dumpster. Then the um, the one three-letter agency found it, and they tried to keep the whole thing hushed up. There's more to the story, but it's hardly worth reading. And the thing is, I knew this from knowing people in law enforcement. I said this a few months ago. During the trade business, a cop that investigated the two guards that were stabbed, one died at Philadelphia at a Macy's department store. I was shocked to hear this. He said most of the crimes being committed with guns are not from gun shows. They're from people 
okay, they're getting you, these people are getting guns that are manufactured by ghost gun dealers. Yeah, or stolen guys, guns, stolen guns. Put guys in their garage. I mean, if, if that's the case, I kind of think that they those ghost guns ought to be registered only because people are taking advantage uh, of the fact that they can make ghost guns. But, and first of all, to do that, you really need some machinist skills to fabricate a ghost gun. If, if a lot of the crime is being committed with a ghost gun, I'd, I'd be all for that, but not gun shows. Hope, but let's hopefully, say you your dad dies and you don't have a gun. You got to go through a background check to get that gun. That's a bunch. That's pathetic. Hopefully, they're making them bad guns. You know, Jim, like yeah. shitty guns. Uh, if it's a if it's a crappy gun, that's going to be unreliable and not yeah, hit like you. a really crummy Chinese gun that wouldn't even shoot an acorn. What's the worries? Everything's good. Boswell, I got a question for you, Mister Do you have any chips? Do I have any what? Jokes. Not that I, I, I'd have to fabricate something off the top of my head. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. We need reliable old Damn jokes. It, Jim. All right, I'll tell you a joke. You want a joke for me? I'll tell you. A joke. I, I do. Ladies and gentlemen, Count Yorga's joke of the day or the joke du jour, as I like to call it. Joke du jour. And it's not really dirty. Um, so, a guy has a drinking problem and he's married. And his wife's always on him because he's drunk all the time. And he's mad because his wife is giving him a load of crap all the time. And he calls up his buddy. He says, hey, meet me at the bar. And he goes, all right. So he meets his buddy at the bar. And they get to drink. And he's, you know, they're, you're talking about all this, you know, family stuff and whatnot. And he gets hammered. Man. The guy who's married gets hammered. And, um. Uh, he ends up throwing up all over himself. And he's like, oh, God, what am I going to do now? I can't go home like this, you know. And his buddy says, here. And he takes a $10 bill, puts it in his top pocket. He said, just go home and tell your wife that that you were talking to a guy who, you know, his wedding was, his uh, marriage was breaking up. Or whatever. And um, he got too drunk and he threw up all over him. He's like, that's brilliant, man. The guy gave you ten dollars to, you know, just let's make it square, you know. So he goes on home, goes in the door, and his wife aunt, you know, opens the door, and uh, he's got yak all over him and everything. And uh, she's like, you did it again. You did it again. You went out and got drunk and threw up all over yourself and everything. He said, no, no, no. You don't understand. I met this guy. He was in a bad way. And he threw up all over me, but he gave me $10 to cover my shirt or whatever, you know. And she goes, really? And she reaches in there, and there's two $10 bills. And, uh... <laughs> I know. <laughs> the anticipation. He said, yeah, I forgot to tell you. I crap. He crapped my pants, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. That was a good one. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. was a great good. joke. And I was worried. Boswell didn't have a joke. I'm like, Boswell, tell a joke after all this heavy stuff you've gone through. He does give us some heavy news. And he's got heavy. another heavy news story, oh, but we're going to have to wait on it. With a joke, Boswell, will you? And with a joke. Hey, I don't want to interrupt this good time because we really are having a great time, but I am. Hey, all the cool cats, it's time for Craig the Hunter's new segment. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. All right. <clears throat> and now for your mostly true news report. I am Ernest Borgnine. Ha. <sighs> There was a lot of speculation in the chat. Somebody thought it was going to be, damn it, what was the guess? Top spin guess somebody. I forgot I forgot the guess. Oh, Sam Kinison. Sam Kinison. But nope, it is Ernest Borgnine. Jim, do you remember him? I think Jim walked, I think Jim went to the bathroom. Where did Jim go? He went to the bathroom. I always call on him when I don't. Ernest Borgnine won an Oscar for the movie Marty. Marty, that was that was a, a low-budget movie. It was his breakout role. He was a Jim. butcher. 
He was a single butcher. He lived with his mother. His wife, his father passed away. He, all his, all his pals were single, and he found a girl that he liked. And his pals started making fun of the girl, saying she was unattractive. She lived with her mother. You figure back in those days, you know, men and women of that age, they lived with their parents until they got married. And he ended up falling in love with her. And the end of the movie, he won, that was the first role he ever won an Oscar. And the end of the movie, you could tell that him and the girl were going to get married. It was a hard one. But, but uh, let me ask you this, Boswell. At the end of the movie, he was still retarded, right? No, he, he was, was retarded. retarded in that. <laughs> he was not retarded in that movie. He was not retarded. <laughs> And now for your localized tie report. Tonight's tie, and I even saw Stiff Richard was in the chat. And it's in honor of Australia, it's the cutest little what what do they call them? The koala, koala bears. Those are koala. really little. My son has seen them in Australia and zoos. They will bite your throat out and bite you. Throat out at all. I ain't never seen one. They'll kill you. I'm telling you. I don't have any desire to see one. How's about that? All right. First, they for the love, one... They first, love human blood. Do they love human blood? Is that a real thing? Yeah, it is. They'll kill you. Hold on. Let me see if somebody... Wait, well, let me do this one first. First, for the 100% real and good news, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind... Be alert and always keeping on, keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And that's Ephesians six eighteen in the NIV. Amen. Amen. Oh, this segment of Mostly True News is sponsored by Krista Craft Survival Knitting Kit. You could, if you're cold, you can knit you a sweater. If you're hungry, you can knit you a net to catch a fish. If you're attacked by an adversary, stab them with the provided knitting needles. Krista Craft Survival Knit Kit, available in the USA and Canada. Because she can't make, you know, so many of these things. So we can't go to the UK yet. Because it's just Krista putting this shit together. So yeah, we can sell them in Mexico, that's for sure. We can't sell them in Mexico. We only have enough. We're barely going to keep up with the US and Canadian markets. And I think they're going to be a big hit. Ooh, now for this special little boy. And now for Breaking Jeff B. (laughs) Jeff B. (laughs) That's all you got to do to track me up. Jeff. (laughs) Video surveillance cameras captured the moment... Jeff B. was run over by the world-famous Oscar Mayer Wienermobile at the State (laughs) Fairgrounds on Saturday. The recently reintroduced Wienermobile, they just brought it back, Jorg. It had been gone, and they just brought it back. But they said it wasn't the shaft, but it was the head that killed him. It was, it was, well, it was all of it. (laughs) 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 Look, did, did you see his mouth? (laughs) <laughs> I, I did. He, was, he was ready. He was ready for insertion. Well, the Wienermobile was participating in a parade when Jeff B can be seen in the video in what appears to be a physically excited state uh, about seeing the huge Wiener Mobile. <laughs> I didn't mean to pause in there. That wasn't for effect. The video captures the moment Jeff B runs into the path of the colossal Frankfurt on wheels. To yes, say Frankfurt Jeff Bird on wheels. It was a colossal Frankfurt on wheels. <laughs> to say that Jeff B was hit with a dick <laughs> would be fun. However, this brings it to a whole new level of enjoyment for the audience because it's a huge wiener mobile. It's so much better than a dick. Frankfurt on wheels. Uh, Jeff B is expected to make J- Jorgi, you make it hard for me to get through. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna shut up right now. I swear to God, it's so funny. I want to start laughing with you. I want to start laughing with you. I can't help it, it's too can funny. Get, can going. We get another look at that mouth. <laughs> right, sorry. That reinforced Jeff B is expected to mostly recover from the incident and plans to sue the meat mogul for Tracy Morgan kind of money. 
Oh, Jeff B's baloney has a first name. First name. It's P E N I S. <laughs> Jeff B's baloney has a second <laughs> name. It's just more P E N I S. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he loves to eat them every day. Okay. Next in the news. Oh, this segment of Mostly True News is sponsored by Brigitte Macron's Hidden French Nuts. So, so, so hidden, they don't even look like nuts. Available now in your salty, hidden French nut section is where they keep those. Oh, by the way, we are streaming on X right now, and I got a quote from a great fighter on X, and this is, and now for mostly true tweets from X, and this is from the fighter, Ryan Garcia, who is a champion and a member of the Lord's Army, which I love about him. No one knows the day nor the hour or when Jesus is coming. April 8th will come and it will pass, but it is symbolic. Don't panic. Faith over fear. The Lord still wants you to enjoy your life and not live in fear, so don't. Awesome quote. Ryan Garcia. Follow him on X. He's an awesome fighter, and, you know, he was in the news recently. They kind of went, you know, they tried to get him into that little group. They tried to bring him to the Bohemian place. Is he a boxer or a kickboxer? Uh, he's a buy. You know what, Jim? You got me on the spot. I don't know. I'm not sure. Is he a kickboxer? He's got you on the ropes. You got me on the ropes, Jim. I don't know where to go. I have nowhere to go, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jim. You've cornered me on my own kick, show. Kick, Just kick world. him, and then once you kick him one time, you're a kickboxer. <laughs> Damn it, Jim, I can't go on any longer. <laughs> First in the new... No, it's okay, Jim. Look, wait, I want to see your smile. That'll make it all better. That makes it all better. Thank you, Jim. Oh, thank you, Jim. <laughs> okay, first in the news. A new declaration in Mexico gives 19 cats roaming the presidential palace food and care forever. 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 That's right. They prowl through the palace gardens, striking, uh, stalking pigeons, and make cameos during televised press, press briefings. Some greet tourists at the door, while others take sneaky licks on ice cream from the staff. I'm sure a lot of them are shitting in the yard, too, in the garden. <laughs> About 19 of them. 19 feral cats have free reign of Mexico's national palace to shit everywhere, long roaming the lush gardens that used to be lush, but now they're full of cat feces. No, it's all covered up, man. They just go by the yucca plant. And they just they do cover it up. You'd be like, what the fuck happened here? All these covered holes. <laughs> Long roaming the lush gardens and historical <laughs> colonial halls of the most iconic buildings in the country. Sorry, were you coughing during my broadcast? No, I'm, I'm laughing like shit. No, my wife was coughing like Donald Trump. You remember when he well, went off on? Shut up, woman! Why are you, why are you coughing? Will you stop coughing? Remember, Hillary was coughing. Yeah, but she was coughing because she had the kuru, Jim. She was eating people. Sorry, this is just speculation, folks. We don't know if that's real, but I'm pretty sure it's real. And you definitely don't want to be friends with them because they end up un unaliving themselves in strange ways. <clears throat> oh, the cats, they have access to every part of the palace. So they walk into meetings, interviews, and wander onto camera, said Jose Ares, the palace veterinarian. So they got their own veterinarian, too, Yorga. Which you're a cat lover. I'm a cat lover. But, but I, yeah, I but it's a horrible veterinarian where there's 18 cats out there and they're like killing shit. And everything. They and all have a cut like, ear because they're they're stray cats. Now the palace cats have made his story after the government of Mexico President Andreas Manuel Lopez Obrador declared them a living fixed asset 
and the first animals in Mexico to receive the title. The investment term fixed asset usually applies to buildings and furniture, but by applying it to the cats, Lopez Obrador's government has obligated the country's treasury to give food and care for the rest of their lives. Even after the leader leaves office in op- October. As for the outgoing Presidente Lopez Obrador, he plans on identifying as a palace cat once he leaves office. <laughs> so, it's a pretty good plan. He's going to stay in office forever. I hear cats. Is there stray cats? Is that our cat? Is that our cat? It's good to meet you. Got strange cats coming in the house. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> the world's oldest. Wait, we got a picture for this guy. The world's oldest man says his secret to. Uh, could you please stop talking to the cats? I'm trying to do a broadcast here. Good grief. <laughs> the world's. <laughs> sitting there going, you book up the bus, sweet kitty. <laughs> yeah, I know it's more bigger than me. It's fluffy tuxedo. Well, I'm what sorry. Was that? That's the Guinness World Record that showed. That's this guy. Look, and I'm always covering one. The world's oldest man says the secret to his longevity is luck plus regular fish and chips. The world's oldest man says the secret to his long life is luck, moderation, and fish and chips on every Friday. Englishman John Alfred Tenniswood. 111 years old. He looks wow. good. He doesn't even look 111. Has been confirmed as the new holder of the title, the Guinness Book of World Records, Jim. I love the Guinness Book. We all have that book. I look a day over 80. Hold on, my nose is running. Let me let me wash it off in my Australian tie. <laughs> have you ever had, Greg, have you ever had real British uh, fish and chips? You know what? No, and I've been there. I lived in in London for a little time because we had an apartment there, and I wow. never got. I ne- I went to McDonald's all the time like a dummy. I was eating rotten Ronalds while I was there. Yeah, I was young. We have a we have a, we have a, a restaurant here called Penny Lane, and it's um all traditional British. You can get Australian food there, and everything. Everything we is know. bland. It's as bland as it can be. The fish. It's like, I think it's whiting, and they serve it with peas and with some french fries. And it's the blandest damn thing you ever had. It sounds horrible. With tomato sauce on but it. But they, they sell it as real. Yeah, oh, no, they got H&P sauce. HP sauce. What is HP sauce? It's like ketchup, but it's British and it's gay. Um, uh, you always have to do that to everything. There used to be an yeah. Richards fish and chips around here. Like 30 years ago, then they closed. I'm going to no, try. I like, I like American fish and chips, man. It's good as That's hell. what I'm doing. I'm doing American. I don't need to go over there and have their bland. Man, it's it's oh, not you good. Know what else? They, would, they would roast chestnuts on open fires out there, and they stink. Chestnuts stink. Let me tell you, on an open fire, it's one of the disgusting smells you've ever smelt. And it's really? all through- I've never done that. I've heard about it, but I've never all done it. through the city of London, they're disgusting. Walnuts well, uh, now, this guy got the Guinness Book World Record, and it follows the death, unfortunately, of a Venezuelan record holder, Juan Vicente Perez, this month at the age of 114. So that was, he was the oldest so far. Um, or, oh, wait, and there was a Gizbardo Sabrombi of Japan who was next long livest, but he died in March 31st of 100, at 112. So this guy actually got the record because his two older ones died. So this doesn't hold well for this man. That's only that's one bad thing about having this record. You're going to lose it eventually. And we all do. Um, what does it say? So Tinswood was presented with a certificate by the Guinness Book of World Records on Thursday at a care home where he lives in Southport, Northwest England. I guess, you know, you're at a care home. When you get that old, it's tough. Man, Boy, if I was like 112, I'd be like, can I die now? I know. Well, dude, that's, that's what my, I mean, I had an uncle that would say, why is God not taking me? He would always tell me, I'm like, I don't know. Man, I don't want you right now. Uncle, we love having you here, so don't leave yet. 
Born in Liverpool on August 26, 1912, a few months after the sinking of the Titanic, Tinsel would live through two world wars serving in the British Army Pay Corps in World War II. Uh, the retired accountant and great-grandfather said moderation is the key to healthy life. He, he, never didn't know, he didn't know what no it was. He was probably drinking his whole damn life, and he just he never he lived smoked. a long time. <laughs> he rarely drinks, and he follows no special diet apart from fish and chip supper once a week. That's his <laughs> It's the dullest thing in the world if you're yep. in Britain. Well, do you want me to read you his inspirational quote, or should I just go on to the next story? No, keep, go, keep going, Craig, please. All right. But I mean, all right. So he says, if you drink too much, or you eat too much, or you walk too much, if you do much of anything too much, you're going to suffer. And it sounds like a legit, that sounds legit, Yorga. You can't do everything no, too yeah, much. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm with you. Keep I'm going. With you. Too much. You can't gamble too much, Jim. You can't go to the strip club too often. <laughs> Jim, not that you would go there, Jim. I know that. Um, you will suffer eventually. Tinswood told Guinness World Records, but ultimately he said it's pure luck. You either live long or you live short, and you can't do much about it. And that's a good, you know, good, good, good words of advice from an older fellow who's lived a very long time. Jim, next in the news. Ooh. Boat tour overturns in alligator infested waters in the Florida oh, yeah. Everglades. Yes, and this is an actual photo of the boat. Oh, I see it. A man has been arrested after a boat overturned in an alligator infested waters in the Florida Everglades. Nine people on an airboat tour of the area, including tourists from Puerto Rico and Canada, and the driver fell into the water when the boat made a sharp turn to see an alligator, but ended up flipping over on Friday afternoon. The passengers were waiting to be rescued for around 10 minutes, which ain't that bad, with alligators in sight. That's the bad part. There's alligators there. They see movement. They want to eat you. You're, you're looking good to them. Pictures, show, uh, pictures showed the boat partially submerged in the water and some passengers standing on top waiting for help. One person was injured and was treated at the scene. The boat operator, however, was arrested for not having proof of completing a boater safety course nor a captain's really? license issued by the U.S. Coast Guard. But I don't know why they want him a captain's, but I guess he's doing a tour. As for the hungry gators, turns out alligators don't eat Puerto Ricans or Canadians oh, wow. because they taste like shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, I were feel like they were lucky. And this concludes your mostly true news report. I am Craig Donter. You know, I want to say I want to say one thing about what you just said about that boat. I'm looking at that boat, flat flat bottom boat. How do you flip one of them unless you're really taking a turn from hell and you get air underneath the boat and you got the air of the propeller that's behind you? (laughs) Yeah, all that weight up top. It would take a lot. It would take a lot to screw up in one of those things. On one of those because they glide across the water and the land. You're they have a slick bottom. You're right, but he had so much weight on there and it was very top heavy. You got air, man. You got air. Underneath. Yeah, he definitely got it. Yeah, you know he he but did an air, yeah. air part, General Ben, the TV series. That's oh, I love it. It. Wait, that was what? The fan was way bigger on the boat. Oh, huge. you're right. You're right. It was huge. Okay. But dude, do you remember that was Ron Howard's brother? Oh, that was Glenn in, Howard. Yeah, yeah. Glenn Howard. The ugly. The I, ugly. Got I got a question for you, Craig. Does mm-hmm. the Guinness Book of World Records. Is there any relation with them in the Guinness Beer Company? Make- yes, Jim. There is. There, there is. That, that is the same. Is okay, in a can, I hate it. It, t- it tastes like a different beer. Jim, how are we ever going to get a Guinness Book of World Records if you're going to badmouth the company live on the air? 
How are they ever going to show up? Bad. My wife caught a case of that a few weeks ago. Jim, we should try for a Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, what could we do? I don't know. You have to do a lot of it or a long time of it That's is what you have to do. On the live stream. Agent J, good to see you, brother. Yes, please hit the like button, folks, if you haven't already. Right. But wait, but wait, but now count. I don't want to put yes. you on the spot, but I did hear had that you had a little something special you wanted to show us over here. Did, did you no, have I, a? I mean, oh, 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 oh! There I'm it is. That's, That's all it. I got. That's all he has. No, wait. What is that for, uh, Count York? Sometimes a vampire's eyes get kind of dark. And you put that in them. Yeah, you are good. Have you ever needed any dental work on your fangs? Did you oh, fangs? Did you what, what did you just say to me? <laughs> <laughs> did you ever need any dental work on the on the fangs? Let me tell you something, Mr. Basel. We don't talk about that shit on this show. We don't talk about that. Jim, he's not supposed to be a damn vampire. Do you know the dangerous lives of vampires, Jim? And you just exposed them? <laughs> yeah, how am I supposed to go cut my grass? It's like daylight outside. I, and I, I have to wait for a cloudy day. I wait for that eclipse to go cut my grass. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, man. Don't bust my balls here, Boswell. <laughs> Boswell's busting balls again. Wait, but Jim. <laughs> Jim, I don't want to cut you too short, but we do have another story about Iran, apparently. Actually, I think the Hal Turner one's better than the Reuters. Version. Should we go to that one? Okay, let me go to Hal. Hold on, let me find um, I'm gonna I got Hal right the, here. Wait, let me pull Hal. I'm going to pull up that um, Hal Turner version. It's just going to take a few seconds. Hey, give me a few seconds, Jim. Okay, they really parallel. Iran confirms large-scale attack and retaliation against Israel. I'm afraid it's going to get ugly over there. Iran hey, confirms... Hey, Elvin Voller is here, you know. I'm oh, sorry, good to Bob. see you. Wait, 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 Jim. Let's say hello. Hellbent Holler. Everybody, please go check out Hellbent Holler. Awesome channel. Awesome people. Awesome show. And his wife, yep. By the way, Joe just turned, I believe, 67. I'm not, no, I'm just kidding, Joe. I know, he, but he, he did, he has a birthday coming up. I think his birthday is either, I think it's Saturday. So happy birthday, Joe. We love you. And Jesse's always awesome. Yeah, we love them. But he's much younger. He's not 67. I don't know how old he is. I never asked. He's fifty-three. Him. He's fifty-three. I pay attention hey, to the show. I pay attention to the show. Yes. Really? I look, I look young for my age too. You don't at all, Jim. <laughs> Jim, Jim, you look like you're twenty-three. Jim, you look fifty-two. I'm sixty-three. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm older than all y'all, and I look better than everybody here. You do look better than all of us. Damn I it. know. That's oh, what I'm talking about. It, it's, it's, the vamp right? it's the vampire blood. Iran <laughs> 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 informs the U.S. through Germany that it is planning a large-scale attack against Israel in retaliation for the act of war committed when Israel attacked the Iran embassy compound located in Syria. Israel confirms they will counterattack inside Iran and go after Iran's nuclear program sites. This, this is from the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee member uh, Marco Rubio. Now, he, he's the US, one of the U.S. Senators from Florida. Oh, that's who that is. Yeah, the water guy. Yep. According to U.S. officials, a rotation of combat aircraft with the Israeli Air Force have remained airborne patrols for the last 48 hours along the northern, eastern, and southern borders with other squadrons in the north of the country and a high alert status able to scramble. One thing that's going to happen is if Iran, if Iran's nuke plants get taken out, you're going to have nuclear waste just as bad as a nuclear meltdown. And this has been speculated about for a couple of years if things heat up over there. If that would happen, if, if Israel would take out Iran's nuke sites, you might see tens of thousands of people just flee Iran. It's going to cause more refugees. Imagine the smell. Where are, they, where are these people going to go? It's, <laughs> you're going to have, if a nuclear power plant melted down, 
even though they say 10 miles is safe, it's really 50 to 200 miles. Look at look at Chernobyl. But imagine the smell, Jim. Imagine it's the real. smell, Jim. It's going to be burnt curry. <laughs> like curry's bad enough. Burnt it's curry and piss and, and burnt coffee all the same. I got a buddy who's from Iran, and he's got that smell. He knows it. We talk about it. Man, if you ever gone into, and I don't want to sound racist at all, but if you ever gone into like a 7-Eleven or, you know, like a quickie stop, like, yes, an overwhelming it, 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 smell. The smell is burnt coffee and piss and shit. Yes. You know, you're like, what? I don't want a hot dog from here, man. I ain't getting a hot dog from this place. I'll uh, get, my, year, I'll get my beer and wipe them all off when I get <laughs> you order, you order a gyro from that place, or you order some some chicken shawarma. You're ordering, or you I definitely mean, don't never, order a hot dog. I don't buy food at Wawa, but but I've gotten gasoline at Wawa gas stations, and the smell of the burnt coffee is just it's just too much. A Wawa. No, I never I've got, even, I've got one, one up the, right up the street from me that that, and they are I, I don't know if they're Pakistani or Indian, but but the place is clean and it smells good every time you go in there, and it's like all right, cool. You know, but there's other ones that just smell like burnt coffee. And yep. Shit. And you know why yeah. so many of those um, people that come over here earn, earn the gas stations? They don't have to pay any income tax, I think, for 10 years. Well, I don't want to get in all that. Yeah, but, but go, to the, go to the Pakistani ones. They smell better. That's what right. we've, <laughs> we've determined. <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, Jim, Jim, I'm sorry. Is there more to this? Are we? Should we be worried? Well, the thing is, uh, the U.S. has been notified that it's going to happen. The question is, when is it going to happen? But um, I heard, I heard the potato said today that he was going to back Israel one hundred percent. Where he was kind of yeah, I heard him say that too. He is a flip flop. That don't mean nothing, man. That don't mean shit. It, it, whatever he says, it don't mean shit. There's stuff. It listen, there's things that don't add up. Look at cord oil has gotten up to the Brent cord has gone up to ninety dollars a barrel. Fuel oil prices haven't gone up around here. Like in my area, you could the, the place I get it from, it's only three twenty a gallon. It doesn't make sense how it dropped this week when crude oil went up. There, there's stuff going on that does not make any sense at all. You're right. We're living in a, a world of that confusion. Now, look, this Jim, this story intrigued me. That's why I pulled it up. Yeah, this yeah, and, and this something like this won't go to the Supreme Court because this, uh, this is on the states. Biden now at risk of being left out of two state election ballots, 26 electoral college votes at stake. How incompetent does the leadership of the National Political Party have to be to schedule its nominating committee after the deadlines of two states to confirm the party's nominee to be included on the ballot? That's a good question. And one, the Democrat National Committee is apparently well-placed to answer. Alabama Secretary of State Wes Allen sent a letter Tuesday to the Alabama Democratic Party and to the DNC to inform both groups that the party must, under state law, confirm its presidential and vice presidential candidates by August 15th to be eligible to appear in the state's ballots in November. The only problem with that is the Democratic National Convention is <laughs> scheduled to begin <laughs> on August 18th. I mean, how, how dumb are these people? And the story goes on and says, what? Jim, I got wait, hold on, Jim. I gotta stop you because I absolutely love it when you laugh during your little precocious giggle when you're reading these stories and you're listening to the bullshit, like you're hearing the bullshit that you're reading, and it makes you laugh. And I love that part of the news the most. It's That's what I love. stupidity. It's like waiting to see your CPA until after your taxes have to be filed. Exactly. Oh, and speaking but, of taxes being filed, if anybody has to do quarterly payments because they have dividend income you got to have it in by april 15th well yeah i had to get i got mine done i had to pay jim i had to pay i don't mean just to your I right I mean, on april 16th right. just to piss i do mine on april 16th just to piss them off i no, should they're not going to do anything about one damn thing you know what i mean by your main 1040 i mean your quarterly no for dividend income wait no, i'm just doing everything oh. By the way, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight, both on YouTube and on X, and I really appreciate it. Top Spin says gas is 666 a gallon for some reason where they live. That's a horrible number. I wouldn't want to get gas. Where does he live? Whoa. Probably in California. 
in hell. I mean, I only put, I only put, uh, I tested everything I have, and it's like four forty something. I think. See, so look, Jay had a pay lawn, today. Yeah, Sorry. my lawnmower's everything. I only put high test ninety three. You do use that high grade fuel. Gosh. Yeah, I use the high grades. Yeah. Good to see everybody. Auntie Adjack, good to see you. Jerry Lee, Jersey Joe, Brew W, good to see you. Mary Shea's in the house. And I know Mike, he's got to be around somewhere, huh, Mary Shea? You didn't get rid of Mike yet, did you? Agent, uh, Mary. J, Agent, Agent J just said it. he had to pay taxes today. I know. He, he was said, very upset about that. I know. Yeah, I did too. I had to pay him, man. I had to pay him. Well, I to me, a lot of money. To me, well, I get it back from the state. Money. Yeah, I get state money back, but the feds, I got to pay so much to fund a, fund a war of some sort. <laughs> and is what I, I, I pay them both. And yeah, not nine dollars out of every every ten dollars is going to Ukraine. Or I'm paying for war. Yeah, there's Mike. I knew he was here. Tim Greenwood, good to see you, buddy. I haven't seen Tim Greenwood. I rocked his gas burns faster. So, out of you, does it really? I didn't know how. I, I thought actually, yeah. I know people. Let people don't realize ooh, ooh, ooh. jet fuel is like a high octane form of diesel. Jim, the dog was barking at you. Benelli, quiet. We don't need you barking during, unless there's a prowler. <laughs> Angel Rose, good to see you. Terry Christ in the house. Frog. Everybody, go check out Frog's channel. He goes through all the waterways and he finds arrowheads galore. I don't know how he does it. But if you do join his channel, I uh, suggest you leave a trolling comment for Frog because he did that to us for years and it's time to get him back. <laughs> yeah. So leave something offensive. Craig Jacob, my brother from right here. Craig Jacob's right here in Mississippi, not too far away from me. Hey, Craig Jacob. We still got to go eat, Craig. I forgot about that. But I was hoping you could pay for it because I'm a little short on hey, cash. But, but Craig said he got $25 back in a refund from the taxes. That's what you want to do, man. You want to break even the most you can. You know? Oh, dude, but yes. Oh, no, that is exactly what you want to do. And I just didn't write off enough is what I had to do, York. I needed to make another LLC or something is what I got to do. I got to start doing Trump shit. You underestimate your quarterly. <laughs> They'll find you. Wait, would you what? They, they will find you? They'll charge you interest if you underpay the quarterly. Ah, oh, gosh. Oh, look, there's John P. Adventures. Good to see you. He's all the way in Portugal, y'all. He's, he's, he's That's for dividend income. Man, I'd Portugal. love to go to Portugal, man. That's one of the places I want to go. In life. Well, let's see. Portugal. John P., is there any chance that Jorg and I can crash at your house? Because right. we can like to travel on the cheap. Sleeping bag and lay on your floor, man. Dude. That's what he told me today. He doesn't even need a coffin. No, I don't need that. Amy Garvey, good to see you. Wait, let me go through the chat. We missed everybody. Stingray's here. Well, that's me. That's you. B Charming, good to see you, B. Marla B, good to see you. Thank you all for coming to the show tonight. We hope you were entertained. I know Jim gave us some horrible news tonight, but folks. Oh, <laughs> definitely. And I see our friends Hellbent Holler. Y'all got to go check them out. It really is the best show. Monday night's live show is my favorite. And they look, y'all, they're no joke. They're a big channel. They pack the house, but it's because they're good. And they give good entertainment. And then Jesse goes out in the field. I know Joe's there, but we're not really watching Joe, okay? We're right, Joe? Live, or... <laughs> no, we love but Joe does a good job. He does a great job. I mean, really. They, they, they <laughs> are a perfect couple, and that's what I love about them. They really are. You can tell. That's one of the jokes in their comments is always, Joe's doing a good job. So just so you know. <laughs> just so you know. What time did oh, they, they, here. they said we're into the weird stuff. No, I don't love those people. Man. I, I, do. I love them too. They well, no, and you know what? Everybody's into the weird stuff. Look at this world we're living in right now. How could you not be into the weird stuff? It's all around us, and we know these oh, things. They're, they're, out there, they're out there trying to find it, man. I trying mean, to find it. They try to hide this stuff. Yorga, they told us everything wasn't real. Back all our elders, ghost schmos. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as a Bigfoot. There's no such thing as a dog. They say these things, Jorga, but I know it's real. One night, Craig, we need to do ghost stories because I've got some good ones and they're all real. 
Let's get them to join us. Let's see if we can get Joe and Jesse. Joe and Jesse, I know we're asking a lot. And look, we are. I know they're going to be like, "Mm." they're going to be like, what? I don't know if we want to go (laughs) with these guys. Look, if we could just get you five minutes. Come down here in the slums with us. Oh, wait. He says, oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. That's probably Joe. I hope I hope it's just <laughs> <want> it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My that, was a good one, no, that was a good one. My wife's going up. Is she, is she smiling? Is she smiling? <laughs> I hope it's Jesse. She is quite pretty. She's she is very pretty. Uh, she is. But Joe's a good looking guy too. And and uh, you know yeah, what? He, he I mean really is physical and getting out there and climbing mountains and doing all that stuff. So he's a get... big old boy too, man. He's probably like six four or something, man. I, I don't know Dude, what he I is. didn't realize he was that big. I wouldn't have been talking shit about him. Yorga, tell me <laughs> next time. <laughs> no, they're great. Both of them are very, very nice. I mean, they're very hey, great. join us next time when Joe comes on and kicks my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be the referee? Yeah, it'll be a great show. You know, people I got love one of striped shirts, man. I'll, I'll wear it. You know, Jorga, people love that shit. When you are, when you have a little conflict, they love it. All right, folks. Well, we got to end this show. We've been here for over one hour. We just reached the one hour, one minute mark, and I don't want to give YouTube any more time than they deserve. Although I do want to give X a little more time, but. Uh, you know, we got to cut our noses off to spite our faces. So, Jim Boswell, thank you so much, sir, for delivering an outstanding news report this evening. Not too bad for, for doom and gloom. Jim We're Boswell, ladies and gentlemen. Can I get one of those smiles? That's yeah. what I need. <laughs> and as always, Count Yorga, thank you as always for being here. You're a wonderful co-host. You had an excellent joke tonight. And you... Ooh. You told me an even better one backstage, but we can't say that kind of joke here. No, that no, that joke was uh, colorful. That was it. Was good. It was very good. <laughs> and folks, thank you all for joining. Please, after the show, go into the comment section. Leave a little comment. You can leave a nasty comment. I I take all comments. I don't care as long as you put a heart with it, because that makes it seem right. So have at it. I give you a lot of material to tease. Should be fun. And join us. Hey, w- love you guys. When are we coming back? Maybe Saturday. Maybe. Yeah, I was thinking Saturday would be good. Let's do Saturday. So we we'll see you on Saturday. We'll get some stories. Yeah, I got plenty of stories. Boswell thought it was good. That don't mean we got to come back Saturday. It's just Boswell. Well, Friday. you never know. Just because you come Jim, back on Jim. Friday. Boswell. Yes, Boswell. Good for me. You know what, Jorge? You know what I say during the day for no reason at all. Effing Boswell. <laughs> <laughs> Effing Boswell. All right, we love you, folks. Thank you, and have a good night and sleep tight. We cheerfully ask you now to leave the building, go on home. It is time for you to go. Thank you for being here, but you're way too slow.